This is an ordinary man. He is shy, awkward, doesn't smile a lot, terrible with women, curious, determined, innovative, he's a railroad engineer, a cameraman, a college student, a tourist, a sailor. He is, of course, Joseph Frank Keaton, or we better know him as Buster Keaton. Joseph Frank Keaton was born on October 4th, 1895 to a family of traveling vaudeville actors. His family traveled across the country to perform shows to large crowds and sell their fake medicine. By age four, little Joseph was already popular on stage as his gag involved his father throwing him across the room. Joseph was called the little boy who couldn't be hurt because after being thrown across the room into the crowd or into the band pit, he would emerge somehow unscathed and continue the bit. After a bit involving him falling down a flight of stairs unscathed, another act said that kid is a real buster and the name stuck. That act's name was Harry Houdini. In his early 20s, Keaton traveled to Hollywood where he met a famous comedian at the time, Fatty Arbuckle and helped him write his scripts and bits, eventually gained his own unit, where he wrote, directed, and starred in his own feature films and shorts. By the mid-1920s, he was one of the three biggest comedy stars in the world. Unlike his contemporaries, Charlie Chaplin and Harold Lloyd, Buster didn't find immediate success with the movie-going audience due to his performance and having a lack of emotion that people can latch on to. Little to no emotions at all. But people didn't expect Citizen Kane while watching Buster Keaton. No, no. They came to see him do death-defying stunts. While Chaplin and Lloyd did do their own stunts, they often used movie magic or optical illusions and special effects to do their stunts, but not Buster. No, he told his cameraman to keep filming until he yells cut or he is killed. This shot is real. And this one. This one. And this one. This one. This one. In this shot, Keaton was warned that if the train suffered from wheel spin, he will be crushed and killed instantly, But and he did it effortlessly. Buster found at a young age that if he showed any emotion during his skit, it would become less funny because of the expression on his face. So he decided to keep a stern face to make the punchline last longer. This is why he is called the Great Stone Face. Because it's easier to laugh at an idiot than someone in pain. In silent films, there were only two real ways to get your story across. One was to use title cards, and the other was to use your body language and pantomiming. The latter was more favorable to Buster Keaton, who reportedly hated using title cards. Bridge picture used 240 titles. That was about the average. And the most I ever used was 56. In this scene, you don't know what they are saying. But with the body language and the table moving, you can get a strong understanding of the of what the scene entails. You can say that he is one of the original method actors for immersing himself and his characters and taking his performance and skills very seriously. Joseph and Buster were one and the same, and as his characters were attachments of himself, it is important to never break character especially during his stunts. That is why he has his blank expression. No matter what danger lay ahead of him, he must always keep a straight and emotionless face and make the punchline work. Buster Keaton's performances could also fall under Brackett's opinions on theater, especially on breaking the fourth wall. When Buster performs his stunts, we no longer see the character but the man doing them. As an audience, it may take us out of the movie as instead of wondering what's going to happen to the character, we are now wondering how is Buster Keaton going to get out of this alive. This is similar today as we watch Jack and Chan and Tom Cruise films told the line between film and reality begin to blur as we see real danger on the screen. Take this shot for instance. He was supposed to make that jump, but instead we see him fall several stories down the building, but he still decided to put it in. And take this one if he doesn't get the railroad spikes off the track. The train could derail and kill everyone, including himself, on board. And if he doesn't get his foot off the track, he can either get his foot sliced off by the cow catcher, or he can get sucked underneath the train and get crushed instantly. But he looks effortless doing so. Because he is so committed to his performance and giving the audience what he, they want. This was Keaton's golden rule, never fake a gag. For Keaton, there was only one way to convince the audience of what they were seeing was real. He actually had to do it, without any cuts. He once said that we either get this in one shot, or we throw out the entire gag. This is why he remains vital nearly 100 years later, not just for his skill, but his integrity. 
That's really him and no advancements in technology can mimic this. Even now, we are amazed when filmmakers actually do it for real, but I think he did it better 95 years ago. So no matter how many times you see someone pay homage to him, just remember, No one can beat the master.